Good day, brothers and sisters. We have started explaining about our doctrine on eschatology. And in our, in our last episode, we discussed about the importance of meditating on death. Today, we will continue explaining on the importance of a meditation on death. According to Hebrews 9.27, It is appointed for a man to die once, and afterwards comes judgment. So immediately after we expire, God will set up a tribunal to check on how we live our life. And then afterwards, sentence will be given unto us. Either we go straight to heaven, we go straight to hell, or we go for some time in purgatory for purification. So mga kapatid, yan ang mangyayari kapag tayo ay namatay. And then we said from Catechism of the Catholic Church number 1016 that by death, soul is separated from the body since the soul is the principle of life. There are basically three main reasons why rational people fear death. All of us should be afraid of dying because if we have not made enough reparation for our sins, then we should really be afraid. So there are three main reasons according to Reverend Father Martin Korchem, a French theologian and spiritual writer. He said the first reason why sensible people fear death is because of love of life. All of us, we love life. It's so hard to part with your loved ones, with your friends. It is so hard to leave your status, especially if, for instance, you're enjoying so much perks and privileges in your life. So people are afraid of dying because they're afraid of living. If they will leave their families, their friends, their loved ones, their nice lifestyle. So that's the first reason. The second reason why every rational being is afraid of death is because death is bitter and the separation of the soul from the body can take place or rather will not take place without inexpressible suffering because the soul is meant to be united with the body. So the separation of the soul from the body cannot take, cannot take place without inexpressible suffering and that's the reason why when people are dying they're so afraid because the soul doesn't want to leave the body the soul knows that when he leaves the body after some time the body will be a prey of worms alam ng kaluluwa na pag iniwanan niya yung katawan yung katawan niya after some time ay uuuri na kaya natatakot ang kaluluwa na iwasan, iwanan rather, yung kanyang katawan. Because as I said, they are meant to be united. In fact, according to CCC number 997, during the resurrection of the dead, the soul will be reunited with the body. So that uh, the body together with the soul would enjoy beatific vision. Those who are in heaven right now, it is their soul who is enjoying beatific vision. But come the resurrection of the dead, the body and the soul both will enjoy the vision of God. Ganon din ang mangyayari mga kapatid sa mga napunta ng impyerno. The soul right now is languishing in hell. During the resurrection of the dead, the soul will be reunited with the body so that there will be double pain. Pain of the body and pain of the soul. The third reason why sensible men are afraid of death is because no one knows where he will go after death or how he, he will stand in the day of judgment. So these are the three main reasons, according to Reverend Martin Kochem, why every human being is afraid of death. In the third reason, he said that uh, we don't know how we will stand in judgment time, during the time of judgment. That's the reason why if we are not so sure of where we shall go after death, it is very important that we try to live a holy life. We should try our very best to prepare for a holy and happy death. That is the advice of St. John Bosco. These basically are the three main reasons why everyone is afraid of dying. Again, according to St. Reverend Martin Kochem, aside from these three reasons, 
The other reasons why people are afraid of dying is because of the vivid remembrance of his past life. You see, my brothers and sisters, kapag tayo naging aluna, pakikita sa atin yung nangyari sa past life natin. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung mga nagawa nating pagkakamali in our past life will be shown to us. And that's very terrible. If we have not made enough expiation and if we have not confessed our sins during our dying moments, it will be shown to us and that is very dreadful. There are people who, because they were allowed by God to return after death, they said that uh, it is their most dreadful moment when the Lord showed them their past life. But thanks to the mercy of God, they were given another chance. So that is the next reason why people are afraid of death. Because during your dying moments, God will show you the vision of your past life, the sins of your past life. And Satan will assault the dying. That is the most critical moment because if you slip from the hand of Satan, he has no more hold of you for all eternity. So this is the most critical moment, the moment of death. When you are dying, Satan will do his best to tempt you once again, to make you fall into despair. He will try to tempt you with vehemence so that if he could still get you at the very last moment, he will do it. So my brothers and sisters, because of this reason, the more we should try our very best to live a holy life. What shall we do so that uh, these things will not catch us when we die? The things that I've mentioned. First, we have to live a reparative lifestyle. Our Blessed Mother at Fatima recommended to us the so-called care core lifestyle. So it is very important that during our life, we must always live in the state of grace. We must always go to the sacrament of confession. We must always visit the Lord through the present in the Eucharist. We must always have devotion to Our Lady through the Rosary, and we must always assist in the, Holy, in the celebration of the Holy Mass. So these are the things that we can do so that um, death would not be so fearful for us if we have lived a holy life then that will not become so fearful for us. The next thing that we can do is to have what you call spiritual ecology. What do I mean by that? Let us try to live in the impossibility of committing mortal sin. Let us try to do away with anything that will help us commit sin. Let us shun away from the occasion of sins. If you know this person will cause you to commit sin, then don't go to that person. If you know this thing will make you commit sin, then do away with the thing. So that is what we can do. And third, we have to meditate always. According to St. Teresa of Avila, meditation must be part and parcel of our spiritual activity. Because by meditation, God will enlighten us and God will strengthen us. So, don't forget to meditate. What are we going to meditate? Of course, needless to say, the theme on the four last thing, eschatology. Always include in your meditation the reality of death, the reality of hell, the reality of heaven, the reality of judgment, and include also purgatory. So, these are the things that we can do. And lastly, let us foster deep devotion to our Blessed Mother. Isn't it that in the prayer of Hail Mary, we say in the second part, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Our Lady will be our greatest intercessor so that during our dying moments, we would be helped by her so that we would not give in to the temptation of Satan during our dying moments. And not only that, let us also foster devotion to St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death. You know why? Because St. Joseph, when he died, he was surrounded by no less than 
our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Blessed Mother. That is the best way to die. So if we foster devotion to Saint Joseph, he will see to it that we would die a happy death, death that is prepared. So these are the things that we can do, brothers and sisters. As I said, it is very important to think about our last end. The Bible reminds us, if you think about your last end, you will not sin. So, if it is appointed for a man to die once and afterwards comes judgment, we better be serious, trying our very best to stay away from sin and to live a holy life. According to Saint Teresa of Abubila, I want to see God in order to see Him, I must die. So for those who are holy, for those who are already prepared, for those who have made enough expiation for their sins, that is something to look forward. And brothers and sisters, do you look forward for your death? We know that the answer to this is if we have already made enough reparation for our sins, then we can be ready and willing to accept death. St. John Bosco had the gift of seeing when will be the time for his oratorians to die. He would normally see number in their foreheads. He would tell his assistant, watch out for this boy because in 100 days time, he will die. And exactly that happens because he has the gift of um, vision, the gift of prophecy. So, so the Saint Teresa of Abila said, in order to see God, I want to die because it is in dying that we will forever see Him for all eternity. But to say that, we must be assured that we have already made enough reparation for sins. There was this uh, nice story about Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. When he, she was still, I think, four or five years old, she told her mother, Ma, I love you, and I want you to die soon. So the mother said, How come, little girl, you told me you love me, and you want me to die soon? It's like this, Mama. The reason why I want you to die soon, because I want you to see God for all eternity. Because I love you, I want you to be perfectly happy. And for you to be perfectly happy, you need to die so that you would be reunited with God for all eternity, to see Him face to face. So, in her tender age, St. Therese already had the so-called eschatological mind. For her, what is important is to go to heaven. Brothers and sisters, what is important is to make it to heaven. It doesn't matter how you live, or rather, up to how, up to when, rather, you live. You may live only like 21 years. You may live like 50 years. You may live like 95 years. It doesn't matter. What matters is you will make it to heaven. Life is just a preparation for eternity. We are just pilgrims here on earth. So what is important is while we live, we try our very best to be pleasing in the eyes of God. It is by living in the state of grace. It is by doing His divine will that we will assure ourselves of heaven. The greatest misfortune is not to make it to heaven according to St. Alfonso Liguri. To remind people that they need to be prepared for that, he even wrote a book entitled Preparation for Death. I recommend that uh, if you can get hold of that book, it is very good for our spiritual reading and meditation. It would help us to realize that nothing in this world is permanent. Everything is transitory. What is important is not to acquire material goods, but spiritual goods. There are only four things that we can bring when we die. Prayer, charity, sacrifice, and almsgiving, according to the fathers of the church. So how come many of us are still clinging on to material things. How come many of us are still trying to amass many material things? When we die, 
we will leave everything behind. What we can bring is our spiritual goods. So try to have more spiritual goods. Try to acquire more merits because the, this is the only thing that matters. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be famous in order to go to heaven. You just have to be holy. Brothers and sisters, let's try our very best to live a holy life. And holiness cannot be practiced without kenosis or without self-renunciation. Our greatest enemy to holiness is the self. According to Monsignor Adolf Plankere, there are three enemies in our journey to holiness. First is the devil, second is worldliness, and third is our self, our self and self-love. St. Bernard's Declare book said, Let self-will stop and hell shall be no more. The reason why many people are going to hell because they always follow their own will. If we want to go to heaven, we have to follow God's will. It is the easiest way towards holiness and towards salvation. Let us always imitate Our Lady. Fear in all things. Yes, Lord. In all the things that you want me to do, I'm going to do it. If we do this, brothers and sisters, then we are going to assure ourselves of heaven. May the Lord God, Our Lady, and St. Joseph help us so that we would always remember that life here on earth is temporary. God bless you.